Hello everyone. Welcome to Power Electronics Lecture Series. In today's video, we're going to take a look at half way rectifier with RL load and freewheeling diode. So let's get started. So in our previous video, we saw the performance of the system for a half way rectifier with RL load. So what happens to the circuit if we have an additional diode called as freewheeling diode in place in this particular position? So in order to understand this circuit in a much better way, let us consider two half cycles. But initially, the supply Vs is equal to Vm sine omega t. So what happens during positive half cycle is that the AC supply over here is positive and negative. So consequently, positive voltage will appear across the anode of the diode and negative voltage will appear across the cathode of the diode. So consequently, diode acts as short circuit since it is forward biased and the current starts flowing through this path. Now, since negative is connected to the anode of freewheeling diode and positive is connected to the cathode of freewheeling diode, what happens? This will act as open circuit at this point in time and as a result, no current flows through this path. So the current will flow through this path as this circuit is open circuited at this point. So the current will flow through this point and let us consider I out is the current flowing through the load terminals and V out is the voltage that is obtained across this point. So consequently during this process, what happens? The inductor slowly starts charging, isn't it? With the polarity plus and minus. So in this process, the inductor starts charging that means the current i is slowly increasing and v out is available at the output now what happens during negative half cycle during negative half cycle the supply voltage will go in negative isn't it negative and positive in this particular fashion so whenever negative is connected to the anode and positive is connected to cathode the diode will be reversed biased, isn't it? So you might ask me a question as in our previous video, we saw negative half cycles in two separate cases where the inductor discharges, isn't it? But in this case, that does not happen. So why does that not happen? So previously we had seen the inductor had charged with the polarity plus and minus. According to the property of inductor, it does not allow sudden change in current, so it will reverse its polarity and will ensure that the current flows in the same direction. So at this point, if you carefully observe, since it's reversing its polarity to discharge the stored energy, the plus will be available at this point and the minus will be available at this point. That means anode is connected to positive and cathode is connected to negative. Therefore, the freewheeling diode is forward biased. So it basically acts as short circuit. So the current starts flowing through this path. So the current flows through this path, the current flows through this path. So whatever energy that was available in the inductor will be flowing, that is, it will be freewheeling across this path. So it will be circulating within this loop. So what is happening in this case? L is actually discharging. That means the current I is decreasing. And what is the output voltage over here? If you carefully observe, this is a short circuit, isn't it? This path is actually a short circuit. So whenever you are measuring voltage between these two points, it will be equal to V out. As they are connected in parallel, the voltage measured will be equal to zero because this is a short circuit. So you'll be having V out to be equal to zero volt. Very, very important observation. And this is very important for us to analyze the waveforms and also tell you what is the importance of freewheeling diode in this case by looking at the waveforms. Now let's take a look at the waveforms that are there. So in this case, the supply voltage Vs is basically sinusoidal and we have considered one and a half cycles. What will happen to the nature of current I out? So as I mentioned, till positive half cycle, that is till this point, if you carefully observe, the current starts charging through the inductor. Slowly, it starts increasing and charges to a maximum value. After the first half cycle, what happens? The current starts discharging in the negative half cycle through the freewheeling diode, isn't it? So the current starts charging and then discharges. So we are assuming the inductor is designed such that 
it is operating in continuous mode otherwise the discharge might be much before 2 pi over here and that mode is called as discontinuous the point at which the inductor current or the output current goes to zero is the value of beta so in this case we are assuming it to be operating in continuous mode again in the next cycle what happens the current starts flowing through the inductor and the inductor starts charging now with respect to output voltage what happens is that during positive half cycle it will follow the input isn't it because the diode was acting as short circuit and consequently whatever was available at the input terminals will be available in the output this is quite similar to that of R load isn't it a resistive load half a rectifier with resistive load again what happens during negative half cycle the output voltage became equal to zero that is in the negative half cycle we saw that the output voltage across the freewheeling diode since it is conducting it lacked a short circuit and the output voltage will go to zero consequently in the next cycle again during positive half cycle the V out will be equal to the supply voltage because the diode D that was in the circuit will start conducting and whatever was being supplied will, avail will be available at the load terminals. So what do we infer here with respect to freewheeling diode? For that we need to understand the previous waveform, the video that we saw previously that is with respect to RL load, this was the waveform and we will be comparing these two. So if you carefully observe the average output voltage V out was much lesser because with respect to this waveform if you take the average value over the complete cycle some amount of positive and negative signal will get cancelled out isn't it but in this case you have only with respect to positive so the average value of v out so the average output voltage increases in this case by using a freewheeling diode isn't it in addition to that previously we saw the current going to zero at some point although this is a, assumed to be a discontinuous mode of operation but in some cases you might without the effect of freewheeling diode what happens is that in with respect to our load we had seen that the current going to zero isn't it at this point but with the help of freewheeling diode the current will still be flowing through the load continuously isn't it if you carefully observe throughout the entire cycle for example, if you have load at the output terminals as a DC motor. So let us say we have a DC motor load. And you are using, without a freewheeling diode, what happens is that you have a diode over here. And during positive half cycle, it conducts and acts as short circuit. And during negative half cycle, this will act as open switch. And there will be no flow of current, isn't it? But in case you have a freewheeling diode connected, at this point and you have a DC motor basically DC motor is similar to that of an RL Lee load but you have inductance and resistor and that is why I have compared with that so in this case what happens is that the current will discharge through the freewheeling diode so irrespective of the first diode operation over here so it will be discharging through this path so in this case what is the advantage you might be having a doubt isn't it so current is continuously flowing through the load for a dc motor to rotate you cannot supply current for one half cycle and then stop in the other half cycle isn't it so the current should continuously be flowing for the motor for it to operate so current is continuously flowing current is continuously flowing i hope this point is clear these are very important points and this is because of freewheeling diode so freewheeling diode improves the system performance having said that we are going to see some important parameters with respect to analysis part the first and foremost important parameter that we are going to see is the average output voltage so v out is given as 1 by 2 pi into integration of 0 to pi into vm sine omega t d omega t isn't it now 0 to pi is taken because the average output voltage was available till pi now what we will be doing is can we take vm outside and we will be keeping 2 pi as it is 
integration of sine is basically minus cos omega t and you have 0 to pi. So you will be getting Vm by 2 pi into integration of minus of cos pi is minus 1 and you have upper limit minus lower limit that is cos 0 you will be having 1. So minus of minus 1 will be equal to minus 2 and outside one minus sign is there so that will be equal to plus 2. So what will happen this plus 2 and this plus 2 will get cancelled out and you will be left out with Vm by pi. So this is the expression for V out average. I hope this point is clear. Now what is the expression for RMS value of output voltage? So we know from definition RMS formula is given as 1 by 2 pi into integration of 0 to pi into Vm square sine square omega t into d omega t. So V out RMS is equal to square root of we will be taking Vm square outside whole divided by 2 pi integration of 0 to pi sine square omega t can be written as 1 minus cos 2 omega t whole divided by 2 into d omega t isn't it now v out rms is equal to vm square let us take this two outside so you will be left out with 4 pi into integration of 0 to pi 1 minus cos 2 omega t into d omega t now v out rms is equal to vm square whole divided by 4 pi into omega t integration of 1 is omega t with respect to omega t we are doing isn't it cos is sin 2 omega t whole divided by 2 into d omega t that is the limit is from 0 to pi so you have v out rms is equal to square root of vm square whole divided by 4 pi into omega t is basically we are substituting the upper limit pi minus sin 2 pi is basically 0 minus of the lower limit that is 0 minus of minus will be equal to plus plus sin 0 will obviously be equal to 0. So basically this pi and this pi will get cancelled out and we will be left out with V out RMS to be equal to Vm by 2. Another important relationship. So these expressions are quite similar to that of the resistive load, isn't it? Half a rectifier with R load. So the analysis is quite similar to, to that of the R load. The next important formula or the performance parameter that we need to obtain is input perform input buffer factor. So input power factor is given by the formula V out RMS into I out RMS whole divided by Vs into Is. Since the same current is flowing through the circuit, we will be considering V out I out RMS and Is gets cancelled out. So you will be left out with V out RMS by Vs. So substituting the values that you have obtained for V out RMS, that is Vm by 2 and Vm by pi, you will be getting input power factor to be equal to 0 0.707 lagging. Now you might be asking me a question as why is it lagging, isn't it? So it is lagging because usually we will be giving the supply to that rectifier through means of a step down transformer and the transformer has inductance. So because an inductance or coil is there in a transformer, we will be considering it to be equal to lagging power factor because input power factor in the sense it is basically the output from the transformer and input to the circuit that is the rectifier circuit. I hope this point is clear. Now the next important formula that is RMS value of output current is given as I out RMS is equal to V out RMS whole divided by R. So we know the value of V out RMS that is Vm by 2R is the value of I out RMS and and we have average output current given by I out average 
is equal to v out average whole divided by r so v out average is given as vm by pi isn't it substituting vm by pi r so the expression for i out average is basically vm by pi r so if you carefully observe as a whole the analysis that we have followed is the same with respect to r load isn't it so rl plus freewheeling diode will have the same analysis same analysis as that of an r load very very important observation so if you know the formulas to derive for r load it will be the same why is it same because the v out waveform is the same for both of them so this is how you need to analyze half a rectifier for an rl load plus freewheeling diode in case you have any questions feel free to reach out by typing in your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching stay tuned thank you